Welcome to today's video. In today's video, I am going to be covering the results of my male hormone blood work test that I did recently. I actually shared this on Twitter and I'm going to run through all of the results that I got, a little bit around kind of what they mean and yeah, if some of the markers are unhealthy, some of the things that I'm going to be doing to um, ensure that they improve. If you're new here, my name is Oliver Anwar. I help high achieving entrepreneurs optimize their health, fitness and performance for a better quality of life. So. First thing is, what did I do? So I did a male hormone blood test, which um, I did with a company called Medichex because I wanted to get an understanding of where my hormone levels were at um, because I've actually never done a test before. I've always lived a healthy lifestyle, obviously as a coach who you know coaches high achievers um, and generally just throughout my life. You know, I weight train consistently, I have a body fat percentage between 10 to 15 percent um, at the minute and I look after things like my sleep I eat a good diet so I am relatively healthy in the sense of you know what I do with my lifestyle so I decided to take this test just to see where I was at I got a test sent over to the uh, to my house um, I did a finger prick blood test um, you just put a sample into a tube, you then have that tube and then you send that tube over um, to the lab. The lab do kind of all the testing and things like that. And then once that is done, they then um, send you back the results and that is what I'm gonna run over with you now, is the results of the male hormone blood test that I got. So I'm gonna pull up the results on my phone now which you should be able to see on the screen. So, um, there's a doctor's overview which I'm going to kind of run over, so um, we'll run over that in a bit. Um, the way that it worked is, uh, as you can see there, we had proteins that were um, measured. We also had hormones and adrenal hormones, so I'm going to run through all of these. So. Proteins, so what does this say? Proteins are vital for the function of cells and tissues as well as for building muscle. Uh, proteins in the blood are measured to help diagnose liver or kidney disease as well as other conditions. Proteins also carry other molecules around the blood, e.g. hormones. So often measured to help calculate how much a particular hormone is bound to protein or free and therefore available to your cells. Raised proteins are often caused by dehydration but can also indicate other conditions. Low proteins can indicate severe malnutrition or malabsorption. Cool, so you can see the two proteins there. Albumin, 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 albumin. Yeah, that's right, isn't it? <laughs> and then uh, SHBG. So what we can see here is uh, on both of these, I'm at a healthy range. Um, I'm bang in the middle for the albumin and then the shbg um, we can see as well i'm at a healthy range for that too um, so uh, we're in a healthy range slightly lower on the shbg uh, but still on the, in a good range so you know i'm happy with those uh, let's move on to hormones okay so as you can see there uh, my hormones mainly all green aside from the prolactine so um, let's run through these so the fh fsh we can see here um, you know, that's bang on in the middle. Um, and yeah, follicle stimulating hormone is produced in the pituitary gland and is important for men in the production of sperm. Okay, so this is for, yeah, sperm production, like I said. So um, you can see there that mine is at a good level, which is good. Um, low levels, there may be underlying problems with the pituitary gland. Um, and if you're having high levels, um, you know, especially men, uh, may mean the testicles are not functioning correctly. So the fact that I am in the middle for that is very good. So that's nice and healthy. Cool, so then LH is the next one. So let's learn more about this. I'm kind of in the middle um, to the high on this, but still in the green, which is good. So um, luteinizing hormone is produced by the pituitary gland and is important for male and female fertility. In women, it governs the menstrual cycle, peaking before ovulation. In men, it stimulates the production of testosterone. So, as a man, this is what helps stimulate the production of testosterone. So, um, I am to the kind of middle to the high, which means I'm producing a good amount of testosterone, which is good. And we're gonna see that from the other results. Um, uh, again, uh, yeah, low levels of LH um, can be seen as uh, secondary testosterone. Secondary, test secondary testicular 
failure in men. Okay, so again, issues with the testes. High results may mean um, that, tests, that the tests are not producing enough testosterone. So the fact that I am actually in the middle is a good thing. Middle to high, uh, that's a healthy range. So that's good. So that is LH. Let's move to the next one. Oestriadol. So I think this is estrogen. It is. So um, oestrogen, which is known as a female sex hormone, um, you know, estrogen uh, is a type of oestrogen which is made in the ovaries of women and in much smaller amounts in the testes of men. In men, uh, estradiol is also made by conversion of testosterone by arytenoid enzymes. Okay, uh, oestrogen plays an important role in men's sexual function as well as bone strength and body composition. Okay, um, so if we look at this, I'm actually slightly on the lower end of this. You can see that we're slightly low. So um, what might high results mean? So, uh, sorry, what might low results mean? Uh, there's currently little research into the effects of low estrogen in men. However, associations have been found between lower um, estradiol levels and increased quantities of body fat, decreased bone strength, as well as some sexual problems. Conventional medicine does not routinely treat men with low levels of estrogen, although this may change with future research. So they're currently saying there's little research in men for this. The fat mine is slightly low, I did kind of worry about that. Um, and they're saying that <clears throat> some of the uh, associations are, you know, increased quantities of body fat, decreased bone strength, as well as some sexual problems. Now, from my own point of view, uh, my body fat levels again, they're at a good spot, 10 to 15%, which is optimal for a man. Bone strength, I mean, I haven't had any issues with bones or, or bacon bro breaking bones. Uh, I feel my bone strength is fine, um, as well as some sexual problems. Uh, I don't have any issues with sexual problems, luckily, um, or any issues in, in the bedroom at all. So. Um, I kind of am going to take that with a pinch of salt, um, but I am just going to be cautious because it is on the lower end. Um, I wouldn't want that going into red. Um, it does say here how might I improve my result. Um, you can reduce your um, estradiol levels by natu uh, naturally by losing any excess weight. So aim to keep your BMI between 18.5 and 24.9. Reduce your alcohol consumption and keep stress under control. Now, that's a really good thing to note is because, and you're gonna see this with the, some of the other markers, my stress was actually high the month before I took this uh, with things that were going on. So I think that when I retest, which is something I'm gonna be doing, that might be a different thing because I'm not getting any issues with, um, you know, sexual problems, body fat, things like that. Those are all optimized, um, but it may have been due to stress and maybe that's the reason as to why. Um, external sources of estrogen that can be found in plastics and food containing uh, phytoestrogens such as soy and soy products. So I also wanna make sure that I'm just avoiding soy products as well, because that may be a reason as to why it's a little bit lower. Okay, um, so that's the, the estrogen. Next, we're gonna go on to testosterone. Okay, cool. So testosterone, as you can see, is kind of bang in the middle there. Um, again, testosterone is the number one male hormone in the body, um, causes the male characteristics, it regulates sex drive, uh, and has a role in controlling bone mass and fat distribution. Um, and then as you get older, testosterone levels in men naturally decline. So I'm 27 years old, so as you get past 25, those natural test levels will start to drop. Um, so it's just something to be aware of if you are um, a man that naturally, you know, your test levels are gonna drop. Based on genetics, obviously lifestyle plays a factor as well. Um, but you know, as you get up to 30, then um, you know they, they might drop. I'm feeling good. The fact that it's at a good range because, of course, my lifestyle is optimized. But also, um, you know, it shows that even though I'm getting towards 30, that my test levels are in a good in a good place. So. Um, Again, you know, low testosterone, um, there's lots of reasons for this, you know, age, obesity, chronic illnesses, a lot of it is lifestyle related. Now, aside from age, if you don't optimize things like your sleep, your training, you know, your nutrition, which is all the work I do with my clients on the program, uh, then testosterone will decline regardless of age. Uh, but naturally it will drop uh, as you get older. Um, and that's where you look into something like potentially, if you wanna do it, um, testosterone replacement therapy. And that's another video. Um, High results in men uh, are not commonly seen, but obviously if you're taking like testosterone supplements, you're um, you know, using TRT and things like that, then you may see uh, an increase in testosterone. Um, 
compared to normal levels. Um, so improving your results, again, um, you know, what, what they've said here is, is exactly the same as kind of what I've said. Aim to get between seven and nine hours sleep per night and avoid alcohol. Keep your weight in a healthy range and eat a diet rich in healthy fats, protein and carbohydrates. Strength train um, and, you know, supplement things, vitamin D, magnesium and zinc. So I actually supplement all of those things um, Vitamin D when I can't get you know sun, then um, yeah, I, I use a supplement. And obviously stress is another thing as well. Um, so stress plays a big role in a lot of these hormones too. Um, but mine is bang on in the middle really, so I'm quite, quite happy with that. Um, again, um, I may monitor that again when I retest just to kind of see if there's any big changes um, as I get older. Cool, so free testosterone, okay? Let's have a look at that. So again, I'm bang on in the middle with this one. So uh, most, uh, testosterone circulating in the blood is bound to proteins, in particular SHBG and albium, you know, those two proteins we spoke about. Only 2-3% to of testosterone is free and available to the cells. This test uses an uh, algorithm to calculate the level of free or unbound testosterone in relation to total testosterone, SHBG and albium. Okay, cool. So, um, I'm in the middle, so that's good, but what might low results mean? So even if you have normal total testosterone levels, you might have low free testosterone levels, especially if you have elevated SHBG. Low free testosterone can lead to symptoms which include lack of libido, difficulty gaming muscle, and low mood. Okay, so obviously if you have a lack of free testosterone that your body can actively use, then you know you may have low sex drive, you know, struggle to get build muscle, poor mood, things like that. Uh, what might high results mean? So elevated free testosterone is normally the result of having high levels of total testosterone. High testosterone is not common in men, uh, sorry, is not common in men and is normally caused by taking supplements aimed at increasing testosterone levels such as testosterone replacement therapy or steroids. Having high testosterone levels can impact the production of other hormones and can cause your body to stop producing its own testosterone, right? Long term, it carries other risks like high cholesterol and blood clots, which raise the risk of heart disease and strokes. Okay, so again, free testosterone and total testosterone are linked. So if your total testosterone levels are low, then you know, the amount of free testosterone is likely to be low, right? Um, and if you have high levels of testosterone naturally, then you're gonna have a high level of natural testosterone, okay? Um, but the fact is, you know, I'm natural, I haven't taken any, any kind of steroids, TRT, anything like that, uh, and it shows there that I'm in a healthy range, which is good. Um, so that's cool. Next one we're gonna go with is free androgen index. So let's look at this one. Okay, so um, again, I'm bang in the middle of this one uh, in a healthy range. Uh, the free androgen index is a calculation used to determine the amount of testosterone which is free in the bloodstream. Um, most testosterone is bound to proteins, sex hormone, blinding globulin and albium and is not available to interact with the body's tissue. The FAI is a calculation based on the ratio of testosterone and SHBG and is measured of the amount of testosterone that is available to act on the body's tissue. Okay, fairly straightforward that. Um, so I have, basically I have a good amount of testosterone that is available to act in the body's tissue, okay? Um, so that's cool. What might a low result mean? Um, free androgen index is less widely used in men than measurements of free or bioavailable testosterone, okay? Whilst a low free androgen index may be a sign of a testosterone deficiency, we recommend checking total and free testosterone to confirm this. So again, free androgen, this is kind of more for, for women. Um, and yeah, for men, you look more at total testosterone and free testosterone. Um, high results might mean that free androgen index is less widely used in men uh, than measurements of free or available, you know, like I said, whilst a high free androgen index might be a sign of testosterone excess, we recommend checking total or free testosterone to confirm this. Cool. Um, so yeah, again, I don't want to read too much into that one. Um, again, you know, I think we should focus more on the, uh, the, uh, testosterone and free testosterone, especially men, um, but the fact that the FAI is in a healthy place and that's good. So that's cool. Next thing we're gonna focus on is prolactine. Now, when we look at prolactine, what you can see here is the results are fucking high, right? Like, <laughs> we're at 349, um, and the healthy range should be between 86 and 324. So um, let's have a look into this, right? Um, 
So prolactin is a hormone which is produced in the pituitary gland and plays a role in reproductive health. Its primary purpose is to stimulate milk production after childbirth and in pregnant and breastfeeding women, prolactin levels can soar. Okay, so what might low results mean? Um, it is normal for men and women who are not pregnant or breastfeeding to have low levels of prolactin in their blood. Low levels of prolactin in breastfeeding women may impact her milk supply. Okay, now for me, men and women who produce too much prolactin are said to have hyperprolactinemia. This can cause by a cyst on the pituitary gland which causes the uh, pituitary pituitary to secrete more prolactin. Both men and women with high prolactin may find that they have a milky discharge from their nipples. That's not good. <laughs> high prolactin is associated with hypothyroidism and can be caused by some medications. In women it is also linked with uh, polycyst ovaries. Uh, because prolactin inhibits ovulation, which is why breastfeeding can act as a natural contraceptive, women with high prolactin levels may have fertility problems. Then it says high prolactin in men can suppress testosterone and cause loss of libido and erectile dysfunction. So this was really strange because um, you know, high prolactin, it says it can suppress testosterone and cause loss of libido and erectile dysfunction. Now, none of those things in my other health markers are there. So um, there may be a, another reason as to why high, that I have high prolactin levels, right? So uh, what my friend Dr. Cam said is he essentially said that um, I should supplement um, vitamin B6 um, in the form of P5P. I'll put a uh, thing on the screen so you can see. Essentially what this does is this increases dopamine in the brain and the rise in dopamine levels actually then lowers your prolactin levels. So um, I actually just uh, ordered some of this before I um, recorded this video. So that's actually coming and I'm gonna start taking that. So. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take that for the next six weeks, um, the vitamin B6 P5P, and just see how my prolactin levels are. I am then gonna retest myself again in six to eight weeks to see if that has lowered and see if that has an impact. Um, because yeah, that was kind of very high uh, and borderline, you know, could, could be you know bad. I mean, I haven't got any symptoms, I haven't got any milk coming out of my breasts or anything like that. No problems with testosterone or levels of libido uh, or erectile dysfunction, but it is slightly um, high. So I just need to be aware of that. And hopefully the vitamin B6 will bring that down. Um, so shout out to Dr. Cam for helping with that. Cool. The next thing is adrenal hormones. So let's run through that. So adrenal hormones, are the adrenal glands, and they're on top of your kidneys and made of two distinct parts. Um, the measure that we measure, uh, the thing that we measured here is DHEA sulfate. Okay, so DHEA sulfate is um, so DHEAS is a sulfate form of DHEA, a hormone which is produced by the adrenal glands and is responsible for male characteristics characteristics in both men and women. DHEA is gradually declined from the ages of thirty onwards. Um, so as you can see there, my DHEAS is super high, like very on the high range. The healthy range is 4.34 to 12.2 and I'm at 13.9, okay? Um, so what might high results mean? Um, so it doesn't actually tell you much as to why they're high in men here. It says ray levels are often seen in individuals who uh, supplement with DHEA. Uh, it says in both sexes raised DHEA may indicate uh, Cushing's disease when the body produces too much cortisol as well as possible adrenal tumor okay so that may seem quite scary now I've actually done some research into this and um, Dr. Cam again has helped me with this um, you know increased DHEAS uh, DHEAS is very much linked to stress within the body so like I mentioned in November I've been going through quite a lot of stress within uh, what was going on in my life uh, and that's a big reason as to, to why that increases now um, the reason why that increases is because um, you know when stress is high the body releases something called cortisol okay which is the other stress hormone now what happens is DHEAS actually then increases to help counteract that cortisol hormone so they kind of 
come up together, right? Um, and, and you tend to find that, you know, if cortisol is released, then DHEAS will increase as well. And that makes sense because I had a stressful month in November, um, you know, th that was really high. Um, and my other health markers, apart from prolactin, were quite quite healthy. So you can see that the hormones related to stress were kind of in, in the negative, right? Um, especially the DHEAS. So, um, you know, imbalance in the DHE pool tends to be associated with distress and psychopathology, such as depression, anxiety, uh, bipolar disorder, eating disorders, PTSD, and perceived stress, okay? So, you know, the fact that there was an imbalance there shows that, yeah, throughout my stressful period in November, I was going through some anxiety, um, you know, perceived stress was quite high during that time. Uh, I was having trouble with sleeping, right? And I, I guess that is a big reason as to, to why that is high. Um, and, you know, two high levels have been detected in patients with mania, okay? That's some of the research that's come out there about DHEAS. So, Again, with that, you know, I think that's one of the markers I don't need to worry about too much. I know that they said there could be kind of potential adrenal uh, tumors and things like that. I'm going to take the fact that I was very stressed within that month as the two reasons why that's elevated because there's, you know, there's a reason for that. So again, what I'm going to do is test in six to eight weeks again to see if, especially the prolactine and the um, DHEAS is still high. Now, if by taking the vitamin B6, it reduces down the prolactine, now I have a less stressful month, and I'm going through less stress, and I manage that a lot better, then it's likely that the DHEAS will reduce down as well. Now, if I do that, what you'll see is all of my health markers should then be in green because everything else seems to be pretty good. Um, yeah, so everything else seems to be pretty good. So. Um, you know, the results show that things are, are pretty good within my body. Um, you know, I'm very healthy, um, you know, protein levels are high, most of my hormones are healthy. Um, it's just the prolactin and the DHEAS. We're gonna take obviously the vitamin B6 to bring that prolactin down, um, and then we're gonna look to manage stress a little bit better and hopefully have a less stressful time uh, going forward. And then, yeah, those should be how, how we deal with things. So I hope that this video has given you a bit of an insight into, you know, the, DHEAS levels uh, that I have, the prolactin levels and those other hormone levels within my body, kind of what those blood tests are, um, uh, especially with the hormones, what, what those things mean. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. Um, I do recommend getting a test done. Um, I use Medichex, um, the male hormone blood test, which I'll link in the description. There's no, I'm not, not affiliated with them. I don't have any kind of discount codes, you know, it's, it's not one of those. Um, but, you know, as a health coach, I think it's very, very important that you get tested for things like this, especially as a man, you know, your testosterone and your hormones are very important. They regulate your drive, your mood, you know, the level of output that you can have each day and you know, throughout life. So yeah, make sure that you get it done. Um, you know, routinely, if you can try and get it done once every few months, then, then that can be great. So thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel as well, and I will speak to you very soon. Peace.